Hello and welcome to the stream. My name is Scar. I'm going to be your host for today. And we have some nice um, Acer Nitro action that is going to be going down. Joined by my side is going to be none other than Joel. Joel, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Scar. How's your bed, Friends. David? Ah, it's been fantastic. And honestly, I cannot wait to jump into the action. We have some ASL Valorant that's going to be going down. Once again, we have to say a big big massive thank you to ace and nitro for sponsoring this event and sponsoring this league couldn't have done this without you but getting into the things we have gray high school versus poor Thicker high school and honestly i'm so stoked for this one uh, i think both teams can really give a uh, fighting chance to see who can come out on top but honestly i'm not too sure what you think or who you may be calling to go for the win on this one well i was talking to one of the gray high school team members earlier today and he said that this match is going to be tough so just yeah, to see then, how it goes. Yeah. fantastic stuff honestly then i guess we can just uh, kind of look forward to it but i think the biggest thing for me now is when i take a look at it i see a player by the name of perg fury under the website who actually is a player that has competed on the valorant side of our eight uh acgl platform so it's kind of cool to see that we're kind of seeing players both in the esports industry sort of seeping into the high school leagues as well because i feel like it's sort of a line for people to sort of share that knowledge not just um players that are in the major scenes staying there but rather coming into the school's league and also just sort of sharing that knowledge with the school's players because i think that's really what we need to be seeing more especially if you want to be seeing more players growing in this space so really going to be interested to see how he does play out but what sort of score line do you predict that we might be seeing coming out from today's game i think if i'm going to be honest i think it might be going to the foot tracker side thinking maybe yeah. like a 13 7. Ooh, a bit of a heavy one but i guess we'll have to see when that time does come but ladies and gentlemen if you are not aware we are acgl and we are hosting the asl acer nitro asl leagues that are we going down throughout the year if you want to get your school involved make sure you make your way over to schools.acgl.gg get your school signed up or if you need more info then you can email us at schools at acgl.gg to get more information on the events and tournaments that we are hosting make sure you get your school in here because i'm telling you you are missing out we have so many events that have happened already and there's still very more to come so make sure you get yourself signed up or at least get yourself knowledge up about everything that's going on asl related but we will be loading into the game shortly but um seeing that this is going to be a uh, haven as our map pick are you sort of um with a certain pick do you maybe think we should maybe be seeing a bit more smoke characters seeing that we do have a three-sided map or would you rather prefer the guys focus more on initiators allowing for more entry force coming onto the sites i think maybe looking more at the initiator side because like in general you have to get a wide spread to defend three sites so i think maybe trying to just capitalize on the less players on the site maybe yeah i get you def that's a that's a good call and i definitely think especially with characters like deadlock as well who can also allow for sort of a bit of range with regards to their their util especially even breach coming into things and he tends to be a very very good pick on the map of heaven so i'm actually going to be interested to see what kind of picks we will be coming out with initiator wise because especially with the new meta um coming in where you don't really see as much of that site def defense uh, on site itself um on a haven you'd much rather have initiators that can sort of allow for you to sort of play off of that site and at least allow it for it to be a more safer approach for you so i really am going to be keen to see what picks we do see but controller wise who are you sort of leaning towards do you maybe think maybe an astra uh but an omen brimstone what are your thoughts on that one I'll probably go for an Astro because she is pretty good at getting like a wide range of on her smokes and mm. cuts out quite a lot of sight. So. 
most definitely indeed so we'll have to see once things do load in but ladies and gentlemen also if you are not aware we also do host tournaments on a regular basis and a weekly basis as well so if you want to get involved with that make sure you make your way over to www.acgl.gg where we are hosting a wide variety of tournaments for you guys to get involved and we have titles ranging from fifa call of duty clash royale in Valorant itself. So, if you want to get involved in the more esports side of things, the more main uh, mainstream side of things, then make sure you make your way over to the ACGL website where we have weekly tournaments that are happening and there are prize pools attached to that. So, make sure you get yourself involved in all of that because you are really missing out if you're not competing in any of that. Um, does seem like we're having an issue, so please stick around as we'll be trying to sort that out, but we will be back with you in just a short break. See you just now. Apologies about that, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. We just had a bit of troubleshooting that we needed to handle in the back, but we are back and we are running. So, game will be starting shortly. But as mentioned, we have Gray High School that's going to be coming up against Fortreka High School in the Acer Nitro ASL Turb 2 Leagues. And honestly, I'm so, so, so excited for this one. And we are kicking off. Map is going to be Haven. And now we're going to see those picks coming through and already that uh sort of that sort of talk we had about the initiators coming through and we already be seeing the deadlock on the side i believe that is the side of uh Fortreka high school 
So that's going to be very, very interesting from them. And I want to see how that play is because I haven't really seen much action come out from Deadlock with regards to sort of competitive gameplay. So I'm really, really excited to see that come through. Then we will be seeing the confirmations now. And it seems like the side of Fortreka are going to have two smokes, actually. Actually, both sides actually opting for two smokes on either side. That's going to be a very, very interesting play from either team. And um, I'm so excited for this one. We have one duelist on the one side, one duelist on the other side, two controllers on either side, one initiator, one initiator, and both sentinels. It's pretty much almost an identical pick with regards to the roles that they picked in. I don't know what's your thoughts on this, but this is going to be quite the game, honestly, coming out from these teams. Personally, whenever I was doing like a game, I'd try not to have two sentinels, but I think they could do heavy damage with that killjoy on their defense indeed yeah so i'm really really excited for that because honestly yeah especially on that defense i think kj is really really good with regards to holding down the side and she can really lock things down with not only just her util but i mean pun, no pun intended but her alt as well so she's such a good character in that especially being on a three-sided map she's pretty much able to hold a side all on her own with just her util so i think she's such a crucial pick when it comes to haven because she's such a good um such a good agent for this map so i'm um, actually i wouldn't be opposed to the double sentinel i think that can really work in this scenario but we'll have to see how they best allow that to sort of work to their advantage and now just gonna be waiting for the load in and uh, as you do that, once again, it's going to be Map Haven. It's going to be playing on those London servers. Love to see that. And then we do see Perk Fury as well is going to be in the game as well. Going to be on that Viper, holding that controller angle for his team. Let's see what he'll be able to pull. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining the stream, once again, this is the Acer Nitro ASL Valorant League that is going down in Term 2. So we still have more action to come your way. So make sure you stay tuned. That seems like it's going to be a bit of a extremely lo long load time. Not too sure whose system is going to be struggling, but we'll be in the game shortly. But once again, while we are during this downtime, if you are not aware, this is the ASL League, the school's league that is run through ACGL. If you want to get your school involved, if you want to get your team involved, make sure you make your way over to the ACGL website. That's schools.acgl.gg. If you want to get your school involved in our leagues, we have these leagues running throughout the year. So make sure you make your way over to our website. Get your team signed up. Get your school signed up. And make sure you're ready for the action that is to come. We have a lot more to come your way and a lot of great stuff in the works. So make sure you don't miss out on all of that. Get Head on over to the schools.acgl.gg website and get your school signed up. And if you also want more info on what is going on, you can email us at schools.acgl.gg. And as I say that, we are in the lobby and we are getting ready to kick things off. And it does seem like we'll be seeing an interesting start coming through. Um, we already have two rounds that have uh, already happened and transpired. Unfortunately, that just might have been a glitch that has come through, unfortunately, through the Valorant game itself. But we are in the action nonetheless. And now we're kicking this off. It's going to be a C push coming through. Let's see what comes through from them. And now Aries is going to be taken down instantly by Hero. And that's going to be the side entry coming through from them. And they have that site. And now the plants can come through for the side of Grey High School. Now we'll be seeing. Let, let's get this grid. Sort of trying to hold an angle. Fury pops one now. Taking shots. Just trying to get that reload through. Just get another one. That's going to be a second. Pumps another one. That's going to be the round. That's going to be three down for themselves on that board. And it seems like it's going to be a very good start already for the side of uh, Grey High School. It looks like the Fort Trekkers side was just struggling to get in onto that site. Grey had a quite heavily locked down. Yeah, it does seem like that indeed. And now 
seems like they're gonna switch things up i'm gonna rather try up for that a push and you know i don't know if you think this is a good idea so sometimes you know i guess if you find something is working you keep and stick to it but i think for them they're sort of trying to sort of bait them out and just see whatever works and just trying different sides i mean what are your thoughts on that i think always in these kind of high school matches you never really know what the other team's going to do so i think they're just trying to gauge how the enemy team is playing Indeed, yeah. And now we'll be seeing the execute coming through. Fury going to be on site, but going to be heavily stunned already. He is going to be hiding inside that cloud just to give himself a bit of cover for now. Headshot comes through from Honor. Takes one, takes two. Oh, that's going to be the first kill. Rather, teammate did trade that one kill out, though. Going to swap it over to that Guardian. And now the bomb has not gone down yet, so they need to just try and get it up. Aries trying to take some shots, unfortunately, not able to connect on any. And now we'll be taken down, and Omelette will clean up that around for his team to make it four on the board. And it is looking like it might be a complete steamroll coming through from the side of Gray High School. Seems like they're coming right out the gate. Yeah, it was a very good side grab from the Gray High School side. Like, really just pushed off the foot tracker's side off site and just forced him away. Indeed, yeah. And it does seem like they do have a really good execute coming through from them. So let's just see if they maintain that throughout the game. And now it does seem like we'll be seeing once again sort of actually a split push between B and A. There's going to be the bait flash coming through from Umsiril. Going to try and see if we can spot anyone out. We'll be trying to sort of ride this little uh, wall that's coming through from Viper. I didn't spot anyone just yet, but they're going to be walled off there. So it will be very, very difficult for them if they want to try and make an A execute. But it doesn't seem like they're in any rush at all. They're going to try and bide their time and wait for any openings. I have the spike. Now, Omelette has the bomb. It does seem like they're going to try and go for other C push. So they're going to be holding that flank, waiting for you any unwary run. players. And now... There's the execute, and there the bomb will go down as well as that KJL. But it doesn't look like they did pop that very early. So Aaron not able to get much info, or not really info, but much value from that ult. But it does manage to at least bide some time for them to push off of the side and reset themselves. Ares does know that there is going to be play there. He does spot Hero. Hero does TP. Unfortunately, we'll take him down as well. That's going to be the round instantly cleaned up. Beautiful gameplay coming through from the Grey High School. Yeah, I think honestly the rotation down to the seaside was quite smart by them. Really caught off the four tracker side off guard. Kinda... Indeed, yeah, and I think they just sort of really played for played for a pick in that round, not really trying to be too hasty and just wait for the perfect opportunity. And I mean, they took it. it was a perfect execute coming through from them. Although I feel like they did sort of pop that KJ out a bit too early before that bomb even went down, but it did allow for them to at least set themselves up good for that retake when the teams came through. And now we'll be seeing sort of a broken buy coming through for the Fort Reka High School. And it's not looking good for them with regards to their eco, but let's see if they can at least clutch around for themselves now. Hero trying to spot a play out, doesn't see anyone just yet. And now, doesn't seem to spot anything out. And again, just going to try and buy their time, wait for the perfect opening, trying to get a pick. Fury, going to try and peek into garage, trying to spot anyone out. Doesn't see anything just yet. And I think this play has really been working for them because it's sort of just pulling each player onto different sites. And now they will be getting that execute through. The plant is going to go down and now it will go down eventually. And now Hero trying to go for the play. He spots one. He takes them down. He takes two down. Oh my goodness. Hero is going on an absolute tear. That's a three. Can he make it a 4k for himself? There is going to be another play. Unfortunately, Ares will one take him down. Ready. And now takes one down, takes two down and Omelette cleans up the round. But a huge play coming through from Hero as he takes a 3k instantly with one single shadow step. Yeah, the four tracker players kind of just lined up for him. Just gave him quite an easy spray transfer onto the second player. In indeed so. And that's honestly beautiful gameplay coming through from him. Honestly, can't say much, but just well, well played in that round. And I really, really love the push that's coming through from them. It's not too hasty. They're not trying to rush things. And they're just going to try and pick them out one by one. 
Let's see what does come from there now. Gonna be round seven. Cover going now. That's gonna be will be one on site that's gonna be holding Dusty Mac. This time they will be going for that full execute. Not really gonna try and wait for that pick. And now that ult will be coming through for the side of Harbor. And it is going to sort of push them back as well as that cascade wall. Going to sort of force the rotate out of them. But they have fully committed to this rotate. There's not going to be anyone on that A side. And there's already going to be a full execute push onto A. This is going to be huge for them. And I don't think they know just yet that there's no one on the site or that the rotate has happened. But now this is their chance to get that push through. And now they do have the info that they are on A. And the rotate has come through. But unfortunately, Hero takes down Bread. And now it's going to be a very, very tough retake coming through for the side of Fortnite. And now as they only have three against five in this situation and that viper ult has come up yeah i think that viper wall on the c side kind of just kept the foot track aside there thinking that they were still attempting to rush into c indeed yeah now the raise out will be coming through showstopper takes one down and now it is left to jk with the specter what can he do he takes one down will use the dismiss but doesn't spot anyone out just yet he knows he knows where hero is now just trying to get info on that last player can't really get too much as he's not really peeking unfortunately not able to get anything with that leah trying to go for the stick but nothing doing as aaron takes him out to get round number seven on the board for them yeah well, the gray eye side is really doing well like really confusing the four tracker side with all these rotates they're just not expecting it indeed yeah and i think also what's going to their detriment is they just over committing when it comes to those rotates and i mean in this previous round we just saw right there where they all fully rotated to that c side which sort of compromised them and allowed for a uh, gray high school to just make that push onto c onto a side rather and i think they just really also need to be playing it smart evenly distributing the players amongst the different sites but let's see if they'll maybe learn from that previous round you're gonna be using the wall now to just sort of oh he got it he got it takes one down what a beautiful push through utilizing that wall to just get better uh coverage on that um on that sewer push and now the b execute does seem like it might be happening and now omelette coming through trying to spot one out with that nade taking one down fury on that massive massive lurk and now plant will be coming through on b but they're still pushing through trying to find the last player and hero cleans it up to make it a 3k for himself yeah gray is definitely not giving foot trackers any chance here they're really just trying to stomp down and just finish this game quickly yeah, and it's, it's just so difficult for them. They really just cannot read whatsoever what Grey High here. School have in mind. And it's just so difficult to play against, especially when you're, like, the team you're playing against is so unpredictable. It makes it very, very difficult for you to sort of try and counter what they have in mind for you. So let's see if they sort of find that counter. We're in round number nine now, and it is not looking good at the moment. But now we will be seeing sort of a push coming through from Garage. Fury now pushing through with Omelette. Omelette as well. It does seem like they're going to try and go for sort of a C execute. Which is going to sort of push those players to try and rotate. And now we will be seeing one come through. Hero gets one kill. Gets two. But unfortunately not able to clutch it on the third. But he does get huge, huge damage and a lot of value for his team. It's going to be a 4v3 situation. And beautiful stuff coming through from Aaron as he takes one down on a huge flank. And this is not looking good for them. Aaron going to be pushing through, trying to spot a player out. Doesn't see the player in spawn. Does see him now. Shots raining down. Takes him down. And now it is the last person standing in the one versus four. Toxic Strawberry not in a good position. Needs to either try and save or get some value from this. Does put the sentry turret out. Takes it down. They got the info on where he is, and there's nothing much you can do there as Aaron cleans up the round to make it round number nine. And it's really not looking good for Portrick High School. It's definitely not. I think we might be facing a whitewash at this point. Yeah, it's looking very, very intense for them now. And I mean, I mean you've said it yourself. They're just really finding it hard to sort of counter them. Um, with their plays and with their fast uh, rotates that have been happening throughout this game. So, uh, you know, I'm not too sure. Like, I, I don't even know what they can do at this point in time because 
I mean, even when they've tried to hold a site, that late rotate has just really just been to their detriment. So do you really have anything in mind for them at this point? Honestly, not really, but these kind of things will come in time. They will eventually learn how to counter these rotates. Yeah, indeed. Now we'll be seeing an execute coming through now as Omelette takes down bread, and now it's going to be a four versus five on that site. And now it does seem like we will be going for, once again, a B execute. JK will take down Omelette, so it's going to be Hero isolated on the B site. And now Fury takes down JK, though. And now the plant will be trying to come through now. That KJ out will be happening, and that's going to be a round cleanup as it's going to be round number 10 on the board. And as you said it, man, it's just looking like a whitewash at this point. I think four checkers are really just going to have to hope that they are really good on attack to try and reverse sweep it back to them. Oh, that's going to be a massive, massive game that needs to come through for them. And uh, yeah, like it's it's so difficult. Like I really, I'm trying to find a way to sort of counter this. But I mean, in every possible angle that you think of it i mean they've just been playing this well in as much as you want to say it might be a weird push or a weird play they've really played this well so you can't really you know discredit them for how they've been playing yeah, definitely now it does seem like aaron is going to try and get some info now on a side gonna push through that smoke actually quite a ballsy play gonna try and spot out jk JK going to be holding that angle as tight as possible. Doesn't know he's pushing up and takes him down. Beautiful kill that comes through from Aaron. But Aaron is going One to be sitting on 37. Remain. I don't think he knows the player is there. And he's taken down. And now, Dark Knight does have that phantom in hand. Has a lot to do. But unfortunately, nothing much he can do there. As the round is cleaned up. Last and it's going to be 11 in, in a row for Gray High School. And honestly... I think this is just playing to sort of the experience that comes through from Fury. I mean, Fury sort of has been in some of these much bigger events uh, and much bigger esports tournaments. So I feel like he's sort of just passing on that uh, sort of experience and knowledge that he knows onto his team, which I feel is sort of to Don't their advantage. Quiet. And I, I really commend them for that. I really commend the fact that they're sort of able to play off of the knowledge of um, one of their teammates. So I'm really happy to see so much um such great gameplay and strategy coming through from them and now we'll be seeing a an a side coming through omelet trying to spot a player out will be stuck on that and now oh omelet unfortunately gonna be the one unlucky customer that gets caught by that ult and does it seem like we'll be seeing a round one on the horizon for the side of fortreka high school yeah all foot tracker players still on hunch full hp nothing's come on to them yet oh toxic strawberry with a bit of valor and timing there doesn't spot the players out but will hold this angle this is going to be extremely huge they're not going to check the corner he's going to take one down he's not hitting the stick oh one strawberry no no strawberry yo you cannot miss those oh that is so unfortunate there and yeah, now that one's definitely going to be replaying in his head today oh no you do not love to see that oh strawberry it's okay we are, our eyes are closed and that happened and now Siddle, the last one standing and that's going to be round number one finally on the board for the side of for Stricker High School going to be switching sides now. So, I mean, as you said, maybe they are better on attack. So let's see what they can pull on the attacker side of things. 100%. Now, let's see the setup that is going to be coming through from them. That seems like it's going to be sort of a mid to C push. Not sure what's going to be in mind for them. We'll have to wait and see what does come through. But that seems like they're going to be lining up for the garage push. Aaron has set up four there, so we'll at least be able to stop them or sort of push them back in case that garage push does come through. Keep doing Our time what you is do going best. to be taking down, and the round will be commencing. Now, 
Actually, it's going to be sort of a B push instantly coming through, right through the entrance of B. That Venom Bite is going to unfortunately take off damage for a lot of these players. But now the plant will come through regardless. Bubble is at least able to allow for that safe plant. And now the Cascade Wall sort of pushing them back and stopping that retake happening instantly. And now Omelette is going to be on site for that retake. Takes one down. That's going to be the last player standing. And now, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do as they're all going to be taken down. That's going to be round 12 for the side of Grey High School. And honestly, it's not looking good. Foot Trekkers did quite well to get that plant down quickly, but I think they're just really struggling to just to pick off those, pick off the numbers of the Grey side. Indeed, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's so difficult for them because I feel like the side of uh, Grey High School have just been really playing off of each other and it's so difficult to sort of be in a situation where you're constantly not really fighting alone but having to counter multiple people at one uh, specific time. So, honestly, I think it's just been well played on their part but just always being able to sort of play off of each other and having someone to constantly play off of. And now, Hero going to be there with that Odin, which is going to be quite the interesting play, it doesn't take too much damage from that Molly. And now that sort of is going to uh, force that push and rotate coming through from them. And that's going to be an instant rotate. I don't think they know there is going to be a play in Sue. It's going to be Fury who's going to be holding. He takes one, doesn't take another, but unfortunately. That's going to be huge for them, as that's going to stop them planting instantly. The plant will be coming through, but the rotate has happened, and they're on the side. Unfortunately, the glass cannon off does not work. Takes one down, takes two down! And that's going to be the round and the game, as Grey High School cleaned the game up 13-1. It was really right. well played from the Grey High. And you can also see the difference between the teams there, because you saw when four trackers decided to make their full rate rotate to the a site that grace still had those players around and they weren't mm. all focused onto the c site yeah it's precisely that honestly I, the, I, yeah as you said it's just really just goes to show the difference um in the teams it's just that it sort of just allowed them to sort of be ready anytime that that rotate happened and i think that's just the element that was missing for the side of fort trekker high school they just didn't have someone to sort of anchor onto the far side and that's really what led to their detriment because they constantly got caught out they always had to play for retake there was no one to sort of trade off of them and sort of hinder the instant plant coming through so honestly well played to them they really played out of their skin and they were even able to counter their own strat at the same time so we can't take anything away from them that's honestly well played from the side of grey high school and i mean the scoreline sort of dictates um which team was the better team today definitely i think i'm gonna have to send out an apology to the gray high team after predicting them to lose 13-7 <laughs> they obviously oh. hurt me and wanted to prove me wrong <laughs> bit of costas curse coming through from that unfortunately but ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us with the stream it's really been a pleasure having you here make sure you catch more of our action anytime we're live if you haven't already make sure you hit that follow button and catch up with any of our future broadcasts that will be happening but i have been scara Joel, do you have any final words? Not really. I think it was just a really good game from the Grey High side. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. But thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.